Booyaka! What's up, Apollo Nation? What's going on, my Pueblos? Your boy here, Apollo, from down, down, up, up. And it is time for another round of those predictions. Yeah! Now, before we jump right into the uh, WWE Super Showdown predictions, I'd like to apologize to some of you. I guess there was still an expectation of me dropping out a results and review video for the previous NXT TakeOver uh, 25, which was amazing. Uh, let me clarify why I didn't. I have this sort of rule. I never realized I never made it that public to the channel. If my predictions are not at least 50% right on the wonderful YouTube, then I do not post a results and review video. It is punishment for me calling the show wrong like I did, even though some of my decisions were fit, rushed, and thankfully I made up for watching the actual show. Because, uh, well done, Street Profits. Well done, Adam Cole. It was a great show, and, uh, no doubt, no doubt. And how could I ever doubt the Queen Shayna Baszler? How could I? How could I? Shame on me. Shame on me. But, this is not an NXT video. This is supposed to be a WWE video. Now, as usual, there is the controversy of WWE going to Saudi Arabia. I really don't need to make any more statements than I just made. I encourage you all, though, if you are planning to watch the show or enjoy the show, uh, check out uh, one of our live streams. I know Cultaholic is doing one to raise charity. Um, I'm not sure what the organization was. I know Sami Zayn is doing something about that, too. But I feel like it's times like this where you're sort of making the worst decision and maybe just a little donation to charity maybe makes you feel a bit better. It would make the charity feel better, and that is just a minor solution that I would recommend. That's all. That's all. I'm not going to plug that any more than I just did, so let's just get into it. It is what it is. Uh, WWE are going back to Jeddah for WWE Super Showdown this Friday, and by this Friday, I mean tomorrow. Um, it's interesting that uh, after all this time, we are not doing a 50-man Royal Rumble. That was only the reason... I was so into this show last year, and it's also funny, they're not calling this anything new. It's called Super Showdown. We got that in Australia last year. If this turns out to be a string of shows that are called Super Showdown, maybe the next one they do in Japan, for example, or Canada, come to our house, please. Um, I don't know. It would be interesting if it was a series that goes all around the world, just called Super Showdown, but Enough about that. Let's get into the predictions. Now, I'm glad I waited a little bit longer than my Cultaholic buddies because there has been another match announced on the apparent pre-show. I don't recall WWE putting up pre-shows for the Saudi Arabia shows that include matches. Apparently, this one will because it has been announced earlier this morning that we are going to be getting the Revival versus the Usos once again, standard tag team match. I'm going for the Usos, especially if this is a pre-show match. Uh, the Revival have already beaten them twice if you count the six-man tag team match on Raw. So I'm going to go for the Usos. I think they'll get another pre-show win. Uh, one step closer to getting another shot at those Raw tag team titles where the champions have disappeared, sadly, even though I love Ryder and Hawkins. And uh, their apparent challengers, the War Raiders, have also disappeared. So I'll tell you one thing, this whole wild card rule and brand split is ruining so much more people than a lot of people thought when they started this uh, a month-ish ago. It's been terrible. It's been absolutely terrible. It's made SmackDown feel like another C show that is just a raw rehash like it was in 2015, 14, and before. So let's end this thing. Let's end this thing and set things right. That's what I'm really hoping to see. But anyway, let's get into the actual show with matches that have been made clear the past few weeks, as little or much as some have. So first off, uh, we are getting a match. One of my personal friends has been hoping to see for a very long time now, more than a year actually, uh, Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. A lot of people don't see this being much. I, on the other hand, am with my friend's initiative. These two could actually have a really good bodybuilding match sort of feel if they put their heart and mind to it. Uh, I don't think that's what the plan is going to be for this show. I'm hoping this match also won't be that long. Give it maybe seven minutes. 
Uh, I am going for Braun Strowman, though. I don't uh, see Lashley beating him, especially after Strowman won the arm wrestling match on Raw. It's it's a simple choice of the face is going to win this match. That's what this is going to be. Braun Strowman. Um, next up, a match that I thought was going to be on the kickoff if there was a kickoff, which now there is, Lars Sullivan versus the Lucha House Party. Well, I I mean, who am I going to pick? It's quite obvious. But the thing is, is this really going to be a match? Is it really going to be? They've teased this way too long, and I don't really see much over 1% of the population caring about this anymore. Lars Sullivan is going to eat them alive unless the match does not start. He beats them up again, but they debut somebody new or somebody comes out to, like, face-to-face -face Lars as an, oh, ho, ho, I'm a big guy too. I'm going to render you. I don't think they'll have the nerve to do that at the Saudi show. They could at the same time. I don't see this being much, so Lars Sullivan for me. Unless the match doesn't start, I hope for better things. Um, next up, uh, Roman Reigns and Shane McMahon at this show. This is actually a lot harder to predict, in my opinion, than other matches are. Because Shane McMahon is one of the most liked WWE stars in Saudi Arabia. That is my personal opinion. The crowd were ecstatic when he won the Best in the World tournament there last year, even though it was as ridiculous as ever. Now he's a heel, and they've been doing the same nonsense on both Raw and SmackDown with his feud with Reigns. He gets help from either Elias, McIntyre, The Revival. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I'm actually going to be a ridiculous lad. I'm going to pick Shane McMahon. Uh, this is more of a throwaway, and they're scheduling Reigns versus McIntyre at stomping ground so i think shane can get away with this one for probably roman to just lose uh sorry to beat drew mcintyre again because i don't think they're gonna put drew over him i just don't think they're gonna do that it's a shame for me to say it's a sh it's a real shame for me to say but i don't think they're gonna let roman reigns beat drew mcintyre i see it almost as a wrestlemania repeat um but as for here i think they're just gonna sneak it and give it to shane somehow some way but we'll see what happens it could just be the same as money in the bank a really short match it could be it could be uh between roman and elias because that was great that was smart booking as much as a lot of people hate that which i don't understand why that was smart booking so let's get past that moving on to the next match we have a 50-man battle royal not quite royal rumble but battle royal the rules obviously being that all participants start in the ring immediately together and the last man in the ring wins the match everyone else has to as far as i know go over the top rope and both feet have to hit the floor but it's a 50 man it's going to be the biggest of all time i believe the previous record was a 41 man battle royal that was on smackdown in 2011 i remember watching that actually i think randy orton won he got to choose uh his cha a champion to fight for the title he picked mark henry and lost again so I, I think that's what happened. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I have seen a lot of silly predictions for this match. I feel like the safest choice, the safest choice that I can make without my tongue coming out of my mouth, because that's what it really apparently wants to do right now. I, I'm feeling all of this mispronunciation on the way. I am going to pick Ali. As far as I know, Ali is a Muslim. Uh, he celebrated uh, Ramadan. And I think him winning would give the crowd that uh positive feel to it and i'm i'm fine with that. i like ali he's a very competitive athlete uh he was one of the original picks to win the money in the bank ladder match before brock lesnar was announced a week before i don't know i don't know all the story i'm only telling you guys uh, as much as i think i know so i'm picking ali unless they have a surprise return to win in a big way or another just good feel baby face moment as far as i know this match is not for anything not a contendership in any way shape or form it's just a match that's going to happen and everybody is just going to forget about it quickly and that's ali he's great but he never gets there so i think ali is going to win moving on we now have a championship match. The Intercontinental Championship will be on the line. Finn Balor 
will be defending against Andrade Cien Almas. Do not cut me. I love his whole name. So it's Almas versus Finn, but Finn is apparently going in as the demon. I am making the safe choice here and picking the demon Finn Balor to retain. Um, Andrade got the best of him on SmackDown this week. Although Finn just hasn't been appearing on SmackDown a lot lately. That hurts. He's stuck in the United States Championship spot on SmackDown, like Joe and Truth were and Nakamura and Rusev before him. So I hope this can uh, be good and Finn can be on SmackDown more. I, I don't really need to make a higher statement than that for this. I might as well think simple-minded. So moving on. Um, we have our first sort of Legends clash up of the show. Triple H, Randy Orton. These two going at it again isn't interesting to many people, but it gets me. I was actually really appreciative of John Cena and Triple H clashing at uh, the Greatest Royal Rumble show last year. They needed to do it one more time, and that was it for me. It wasn't anything amazing, but it was just those two wrestling again. And now Triple H and Orton are going to do it. Is it going to be great? Probably not, but I get to see it one more time. I'm going to pick the game. He beat Batista at WrestleMania. He'll probably put down Randy here, too. They haven't been doing anything with Randy lately, and they might as well just do a Triple H win. That's just my opinion. Orton beating Triple H, it could happen, but... Eh. Triple H. <laughs> He'll just get that shovel out. I don't know. Let's go. Um, so now we are down to our last three. Let's talk about the championship matches first. The WWE Championship is on the line. Kofi Kingston defending against the recently returned Dolph Ziggler. It should have been me. He is a whining lad, but bless him. I love Dolph Ziggler. He's fun. So, does Dolph Ziggler take the WWE Championship? Probably not. Does Brock Lesnar cash in on this match? Ooh, there may be a swerve coming for this show. Brock and his briefcase have been on Raw every single week since he won the Money in the Bank ladder match, which is great. I love seeing Brock every week. He's actually really fun if you let him work. So is he going to cash in on the Universal Champion, or is he going to swerve us all and take the WWE Championship? I wish I could tell you, but here's my prediction. I see uh, Kofi Kingston retaining the WWE Championship if, if, if the match stays just Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler. No Brock Lesnar cash in midway through the match. If Brock Lesnar cashes in on this any point in time, you know Brock will win. They wouldn't throw it away when it was just Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler having a match. There's no way either could survive if Brock cashed in. If Brock cashes in afterward, Brock Lesnar, I'm giving you all my evaluated picks now because you deserve them. I love you, my subscribers. Also, it just makes more sense in my head. Like I said, if it stays a one-on-one, -on -one, Kofi. Brock cashes in midway through, Brock. Brock cashes in after on the winner, Brock. That's it. That, that, that's all that really needs to be said. I'm just hoping to see Kofi Kingston come out of it and get on a better road to a new contender for stomping ground. Maybe Kevin Owens again, although I don't really see the point in it this time. I'm hoping Randy Orton, honestly. Which makes more sense to give Orton the win over Triple H, but this show is not going to be remembered, so it doesn't matter. Orton. Orton and Kofi, and Kofi finally gets that one win over Orton where it counts. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Randy. Don't like you. Um, now let's talk about the Universal Championship pitcher. Seth Rollins, a beaten, battered Seth Rollins, who we saw taken to a local medical facility because you can't use the word, uh, hospital on Raw. So, uh, Seth defending against Baron Corbin, a very strange choice of, uh, decisions because there was a fatal four-way elimination match on Raw a couple weeks ago, and Corbin eliminated Miz but ended up winning the match because apparently his other opponents were counted out or eliminated by just leaving ringside area. That's so WWE. I laughed so much when I figured out what just happened. But Baron Corbin, I knew he was going to beat Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. He is one of Raw's biggest heels. Corbin, whether anyone likes it or not, is a big deal, and I'm glad I'm still a fan of him. Off with your head, up, up, down, down. This is down, down, up, up. 
It's prediction time. So, uh, again, same rules apply to Brock and this situation. If it stays a one-on-one -on -one match, obviously Seth Rollins is going to retain. There is no doubt in my mind about that. If Brock cashes in midway through, I'm going to pick Brock. If Brock cashes in after the match, I'm going to pick Seth. To retain, at least. I don't think WWE are going to hand Brock the Universal Championship at this show. But if he cashes in midway through, hmm, I might be backsassing my own words here. If he cashes in midway through, Corbin could be pinned by Seth still, and that would be it. So I take it back. I'm actually going to reverse something. I, I'm picking Seth for all scenarios. I don't see Seth Rollins leaving that show without the Universal Championship one way or another. The WWE Championship is what I'm worried about. I sense a swerve coming our way. So, that's all that really needs to be said. Go Seth Rollins. You're not losing your title yet. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Now it's time to talk about the last match on the show. Oh boy. The Undertaker, the dead man, the phenom, the Prince of Darkness, taking on WCW's Goldberg. Ah. These two are actually going to have a wrestling match. Sure, it's late, and they collided a little bit, in the 2017 Royal Rumble, Goldberg hit Undertaker with a spear, but Undertaker threw Goldberg out of that match and eliminated him. That's really the most those two have had in terms of ring time with each other. They had a little bit of a run-in on SmackDown, cute little face-to-face. -face. Now they're actually going to have a match. And as silly as people are going to call me on this, I'm going to pick Goldberg. I don't see Goldberg coming back to lose to The Undertaker. This is the opposite of the Triple H Sting scenario that really ticked everybody off except me because I was rooting for WWE. I knew they were going to make it a war. They brought out DX. They brought out the NWO. They brought back Shawn Michaels. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of fun still. And it was rewarding for me because I knew what they were doing. It had nothing to do with Sting being new in WWE. It had to be putting that one final bullet in the coffin of WCW. This, this is the opposite. Goldberg is not coming back to take a tombstone and lose to The Undertaker. This will probably be maybe a two, three minute match. Some spears, jackhammer, good night, Undertaker. He's lost lately. He lost to Triple H and DX last year. He'll probably lose this match too. And if he doesn't, great. I love The Undertaker. It's not about me hating The Undertaker. It's just what I think is going to happen. And I see Goldberg winning the match. So there it is. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, listening to my rambling of predictions. I really appreciate your support once again. Still having tons of fun on the channel, making it through all these predictions and all the fun, and maybe getting through more one day uh, if time is available. <laughs> Thank you all. A like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you're hoping to see at the Super Showdown Network special. If you're not going to watch it, let me know too. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Thank you all. I will see you maybe for my results and review video. Maybe. If not, you can understand why. But cheers, you wonderful people. We'll see you later, and hopefully we get better feelings coming out of this show. So that's all that needs to be said. Hope you all enjoy your wonderful day. Keep it real. Booyaka!